that they're recording. I'm just going to hide my face because I can't concentrate when I see it in the screen. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Let's see, there we go. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Submitting OERs in the Open Library at eCampus Ontario. My name is Sarah Sukmanen. I am the coordinator here for the Open Library at eCampus Ontario. I am also joined by my colleague, the lovely Mary Gu, who will be helping moderate the chat. We'd like to start this session in a land acknowledgement. The offices of eCampus Ontario located in downtown Toronto are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. We acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous people whose footsteps have currently do and will continue to mark this territory. And we also ask that you consider the caretakers of the lands and waters on which you are situated. I'm coming to you as a settler here on land covered by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaties, where I have the honor to work and play. Feel free to share your own land acknowledgement in the chat. So the agenda for today is we're going to have a OER overview. I'm sure most of you are well aware of OERs, but just in case, we'll do a quick overview. Uh, how to quickly search through our open library catalog, the main event submitting an OER, and then how to update an OER. So all that out of the way, let's talk about OERs. It's probably good to define the term just to make sure we're all on the same page. So a definition that gets thrown out a lot is one put forth by David Wiley, one of the big names in the Open Content Initiative. The term open content, content and open educational resources describe any copyrightable that is either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free and perpetual permission to engage in the 5R activities, retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. So we've got a whole other workshop dedicated to those basics on the 5R activities, which you're welcome to check out the recording of on our YouTube channel. You're welcome to kind of discover the basics in the workshop or email us with any questions. Uh, but I don't want to get bogged down with the basics right now, but just rem a reminder that you can remix and reuse and redistribute materials depending on the licensing associated with the OER. What an OER can look like is vast. It doesn't have to look like just a common textbook. We have a lot of different OERs in the Open Library Catalog. We've got a list of files and media types that continues to expand from simulations to assessments to common cartridge courses or podcasts and textbooks or textbooks on how to make podcasts, video recordings, interactive activities, and VRs. OER is not just a book, really there's much more an OER can be. So what can you do with an OER? What makes OERs great is that there's many ways that you can use an OER. The five R's of OERs consist the different ways you can use an OER. They consist of retaining, which means to make, own, and control a copy of a resource you find in our catalog. Revise, meaning you can edit, adapt, and modify the resource. Remix, you can combine your ideas with other existing material to create something new. Reuse, you can use an original work, revised or remixed copy of your resource and make it public. For example, in a presentation. And finally, redistribute, which means you can share copies of your work, whether it is an original work or remix resource to others in your community. Through our open library catalog, you are able to search through our available resources on our OL website. To do this, you can use the top search bar to search for titles, authors, and keywords of materials you are interested in. 
On the left hand side, we have filters you can use to narrow down your search. You can filter by subjects, additional features like if the resource has ancillary material or accessible accessibility statements, item types, which means resources that are a textbook, instructional object, or primary resource, language, educational level, media format, uh, if you're looking for things like PDFs, common cartridge, video files, and license types. You also have the ability to filter by date if you're looking for resources published recently and by institutional affiliation. Now, let's get to the main event of this workshop, how to submit an OER in the Open Library. When you reach the submitting OER page that is being dropped in the chat right now, you will first see the required and recommended criteria. From the required rec criteria, what we require is that the OER one has an open license, so it has a Creative Commons license or in the public domain. Two, all content is free from copyright restrictions. And three, the resource includes one edible file. An edible file is a digital file that a user can easily edit and change. It can also be transferred from one platform to another and can be accessed from different devices with the content intact. These are the baseline requirements of submitting a resource, but to make a resource more accessible and well-rounded, we also have recommendations that you can read on our website. Some of these recommendations include the resource meets the AODA accessibility requirements, include interactive components, and that the resource has a cover page. For the first part of the form, there are areas to fill out uh, the title, authors, editors, and other contributors. If you see a red asterisk beside the metadata field, you must fill it out to be able to send it to the open library. We encourage you throughout this process to fill as much as possible to make sure your resource is more dis discoverable and fill out more than the red asterisk fields. For authors, editors, and contributors fields, um, you can add multiple by clicking on the add button. And as a side note, the order you add the names is the order it will show up in the catalog. So if you want some names to appear first, you would add them first. For the next part, the two areas I want to bring your attention to is the primary contact email and the language section. Even though the primary contact does not include a red asterisk, this piece of information is important to us. If there are any issues that come up in regard to your resource, this email allows us a way to contact you to clarify any questions or resolve any technical issues. For the language section, if you're submitting the same resource in multiple languages, say in English and French, for example, please submit as two separate resources. You can select that the resource does come in multiple languages to let the user know that it is available in both resources, but this will make it easier for users to find resources in the preferred language if they are submitted uh, separately. For education level, it has options for college, undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate, adult, and continuing education and other as options. For learning resource type, we have a range of options that your resource can fall under. It is recommended to choose up to three learning resource types to make the information more concise and not over flood with more than that. The description will act as the abstract for your resource and what will appear to the public as the summary of what your resource is about. Next is the subjects. The main area I would like to highlight is the subject keywords. When filling this section out, I would like you to think of the keywords you would use from the perspective of the user if you were trying to find your resource. What keywords would you use to search for your OER in the Open Library Catalog? Subject keywords allow you to highlight topics of interest in your resource's content. 
They do not have to be a single word. You may string a few words together to form a term. The term will count as one keyword. Enter keywords into the text box, separating them with commas. Capitalize the first letter of the keyword along with any proper nouns. For the upload section, you have the ability to upload a wide range of file types, but also URLs where your OER is hosted. If you're submitting a new URL, it is advisable to submit an exported file version to the Open Library as a backup. When creating your file for your OER package, your OER that will be useful to user sorry, name your OER that will be useful to the user and clearly label all files that submitted that make sense. You may also upload, upload any additional files here like the cover image or any supplementary material to make your resource more appealing. Your resource will require a license. This needs to be an open license. Most common ones are from the Creative Commons, for more in-depth explanation on licensing, there is an explanation in the Open Library YouTube page. You also have the ability to choose TK labels if that better suits your resource, and there is also a part on TK labels in the Introduction to Licensing video that is being dropped in the chat. You have the ability to provide additional details and identifiers to your resource if they are available. You can add a digital object identifier, a DOI, which uniquely identifies an instance of digital content and provides a persistent link to the object's online location. Uh, you can add an ISBN, which is a numeric book identifier that uniquely identifies a publication and an open research and contributor identifier, which is a persistent digital identifier that distinguishes researchers from one another and connects their professional activities online. We are almost at the end of the submission process. This section may not apply to you. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and click submit. If your resource is owned and or managed by an organization or person, Please specify if your resource is part of a series, external peer review, and or specific course, this is an area to relate that information for your resource. Next part is for those who already have an OER in the open library, but is looking to update their resource or have plans to update their resource in the future. The updated files form is for corrections and additions to your resource. If you're submitting a new addition to your resource, you would treat this addition as a whole new resource and submit it through the sub a previous submission form. You must be a, contribu a contributor or a copyright holder of the resource, or you have been authorized to submit these files on behalf of the contributor. This form includes a guide correction, adaptation, and new edition guidelines if you are ever confused about how to make updates to your resource. If the new file you are uploading exceeds uh, two gigabytes, it becomes hard to submit those files in the open library. There are multiple things you can do to remedi remedy this. One, compress the file. Two, provide a URL to, to a cloud storage. And if those aren't options, contact us at the Open Library and we'll help you find an alternative method. Updating your OER is much simpler process. The primary things that is needed is the name, email, resource title, and if your resource has been cataloged, uh, the submission ID. The submission ID, uh, it's a three digit number that is assigned to your resource when you initially submit your resource. If you have that number, it is, help, it is helpful, but not required. The crucial part of this form is what changes have been made and the new files that will replace the previous files. Provide a brief overview, what has been updated and what needs to be replaced. After this, all you need to do is press submit and you're all done. If you're having trouble submitting your files through this form due to size, 
email us and we'll try to find an alternative that goes uh, for the previous forms when you're first submitting your OER. From this point, for both submission and update form, the OL team will review the submission, catalog the resource, and you will receive an email once this is done. Now is our Q&A portion. If you have any questions in the future, you can email the open library at open at ecampusontario.ca. We can stop recording and we can start the Q&A session.